The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 11th, the Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. We realize that sometimes it's difficult to call in. But if you've got a question, you can send off an email. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be good enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, a slightly mixed bag out there. That mix is really just coming from the semis, which are off about 7 tenths percent, down 24 points. Otherwise, other U.S. indices traded the upside. 129 points for the Dow, 11 points for the S&P, 12 points for the NASDAQ, 100, 10 points for the Russell. Gold is up 5 bucks. Silver's off 4 pennies. Lights recruit up a buck 68. Natural gas up 7 cents. The 30-year charge we printed at 124.08. That is up 8 ticks. So let's begin, as we do these days, by Take a look at market breadth out here. So let's begin. We've got five different time frames that we can look at for the ES and the NQ, for the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. This is the market breadth for the S&P right now. From a 30-minute basis, 234 above, 88 below. That is very bullish conditions for it. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, this will populate here momentarily. Look in the upper left-hand side. You can look at the graph itself, but really the details, what's important. 50 instruments trading above profile, 19 below. So we know for the 30-minute time frame, conditions right now, that's really, that's the shortest term time frame that I've got out here from a market profile standpoint. Conditions are bullish. Conditions are bullish. Now let's take a look at the other four time frames: 60, 240 daily and weekly. S and P 500 were bullish across the board. Let's take a look at that Nasdaq 100, bullish across the board. Conditions are bullish across the board. 30, 60, 240 daily and weekly. That is really important information. So now let's take that now. So we know that that's bullish. What else do we have out there to take a look at? Well, from a market breast standpoint, so to speak, we can take a look at that advanced client oscillator inside the New York Stock Exchange. When it's above this little it's up panel number three, when it's above the uh, zero threshold line, that tells us that bulls are in control. If you take a look at the summation index, that would be panel number four. Out here, you'll see that change is green when the uh, advanced client oscillator is above zero. To, uh, to, uh, co the color becomes red when it's below zero. Tells us basically who is in control. Well, based upon this tool, it is the buyers that are in control of the market as we speak right now. I guess last week we can take a look at Apogee and Perigee. Uh, with regard, Perigee is the uh, uh, most recent lunar phase that came in. Price is still below those levels. These would be the areas to look at on a really big rally. You'd be watching 44.90 for the ES and 15.344 for the NQ out there. But overall conditions remain bullish for the equity markets. Well, if they remain bullish, Steve, -O, why don't we change the screen? Let's do that. And let's go take a look at the uh, intraday charts for the NQ and the ES. Excellent suggestion. Let's go do that. This is not the set of charts that uh, we're going to take a look at. Give me a moment. We'll get over to that. And here we've got the ES mini. So in the case of the ES mini, 
I just happened to be uh, in uh, sitting at my desk this morning when – actually, what I did was this here. If we take a look at what's transpired so far from an intraday standpoint, and I'll just switch over to the 30-day chart. So I did give warning to those folks inside the Tiger's Den or at least provide them with the information. So we had the markets moving lower. The ES Mini, the uh, NQ really is one that dragged things down out there. But it was the NQ was attacking its breakout level at 15.101. The ES was attacking its bullish structured 30-minute profile. Now, what's the importance of that? Well, the importance was when I took a look at market breadth for the ES Mini, it was significantly bullish. I don't recall those data statistics are inside the uh, den uh, here inside uh, Discord, but you can take a look at them. So as we had very strong bullish market breadth for the 30-minute time frame, all the other time frames were also bullish, we had price pulling back into the bullish structured profile area, and price did find support right down at the bottom of that profile at 44.42. Now what price is doing and it's attempting to take out the top of its profile. That's not really the data point that's important for you to understand right now. The important point is the bearish reversal candle. So out here, the key level to be watching is going to be 44.57. If price is able to close above 44.57, we should see a continued move higher inside the ES Mini. Continued move higher to where, Steve? -O? Excellent question. That question can be answered now by going back and taking a look at that uh, panel that had all of the intraday charts out there. And the answer to that question becomes the daily oscillator and change line becomes one target. And that'd be up at the 4481-ish area. We look at a five-hour time frame chart out here. The five-hour time frame chart shows that we are above the oscillator and change line, which is green. That's a bullish condition, and we're above the top of its profile. Its time frame says, I want to move higher. The 240-minute time frame chart is going to form bar number eight. It will do that at 2 p.m. It'll complete the TD9 count pattern as we come into the close. Price right now is dealing with resistance. 44.56.75 is what we'll call it. And if price can close above that, we're at 44.56 and a quarter. If you close above that, we're on our merry way. We likely rally into the close. If we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, it has a negated TD9 count top. Price is trading above a bearish structured profile and above its oscillator and change line. Conditions are bullish. If we take a look at the 60-minute time frame, the 60-minute time frame, we already know the market breadth is bullish there. If we take a look at where its next battle is, it's going to be at 44.62. If it can take out 44.62, it has a battle at 44.70. So watch 44.62 as really the next key data point inside the ES Mini, although I think the 30-minute chart wasn't at 44.57. So you got that. You got those two levels to be watching and observing. And finally, you get down into the 15 and the 10-minute chart. There, there's nothing here inside the ES Mini to suggest any kind of a top uh, as we speak right now. So if you're short, I would be careful. Conditions are simply bullish, no matter what it is that we look at. That doesn't mean that they. We can't see selling that begins it's 11 14 and 11 14 and another two seconds out there we absolutely can't i can't control that what i can control is what is price doing with regard to where our support and resistance and different patterns that are out there so now we've got the nq charts that are populating we know it's bullish for the time frames that we monitor 30 minute chart so if we take a look at a 30 minute chart what we know is price already tried to bust it down it pulled price right back to its breakout level you should want to know this td9 call pattern i teach it to subscribe Subscribers out there, just sign up for Mastering Probability. Even if you only did it for a full 29 days, you're going to get an education of a lifetime. That I will guarantee. Steve Rhodes with TF and Ed. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free Today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We got uh, still a mixed market out there. The Nasdaq just went slightly negative, down six points. The semis off 35. We'll certainly take a look at those during the uh, show today. But first, let's go to our first request from Dan inside the Tigers Den. We're going to take a look at Lightbridge. LTBR is the uh, ticker corporation, which has a uh, confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. So let's draw that pattern in here. The A point right down here, it looks like on May the 4th, that makes a run up into a high on May 23rd. Let's just copy and paste this line. We'll carry that over to the uh, C point and get an approximate uh, price projection. That approximate price projection will get us up to about um, – six dollars and 39 cents so uh, dan the very first thing we have again and the b point which was back on may 23rd did volume of 126 thousand shares that was passed with 221 thousand shares on june 20th so you have a confirmed a to b equals cd to the upside so price should really target that 630 level this retracement here we can see this uh, uh b to c retracement that is less than a, a 0.618 retracement price finding support at the bottom of that profile so this could do more than a one-to-one -one. i say could do dan i hesitate to say could do even though i said it uh, well why do you hesitate to say could do because of that weekly chart and you're seeing what i'm seeing this is going to complete a td9 count top this week so that makes this high whichever whatever the highest high is this week and i don't know that we're in just yet in fact i don't think that we are it'll make the high for the week really important why well because next week if price closes above whatever this week's high is that tells you about a very strong upward momentum move with 720 most certainly being the next target now this need to be equal cd we just took a look at that the one to 1.272 expansion will get you up to 696 out there and the one to one point 
618 would get you up to 768. But right now, you've got no resistance when we take a look at daily, weekly, or monthly. Your only issue that you're dealing with here is the weekly TD9 count. Now, what you want to watch for in the daily time frame as we approach Friday, if you were to get a bearish reversal candle, because right now we have a Rhodesman indicator signal that's been triggered, that would identify the top. And then that would go along with the weekly. And then what I would say is price would pull back to at least test support. Now, support in LTBR is now going to be the top of its daily daily profile, at least that would be level one, currently at 594, and level two would be the oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 581. That'll be a different number for sure, should you get that bearish reversal candle. So overall, if we summarize this, everything here for Lightbridge Corporation looks good. It's got a confirmed A to B equals CD, gets us up to at least 639, maybe beyond that. But we have to be concerned about this week identifying perhaps an intermediate term top out there. We just don't have that signal coming from the daily time frame right now. So, Dano, I hope that helps out with regard to LTBR, and thank you so much for taking the time to provide me with the request. You had a second request out there, and that was for SBSW as a ticker symbol. And SBSW is Cybane Stillwater, trading out right now at about $6.45. Now, the beauty there, Dan, is what you're looking for is a close above 639. 639 is the top of its bearish structure daily profile. Now, you'd like to see two consecutive closes above that. If you get that, that's telling us about a move up to 716. Now, I think more likely than not, we will see closes above 639. I don't have any special information out there. Um, but uh, what we should see then is we've got a, a nice roads momentum indicator and TD9 count bottom that is showing up for the weekly time frame out there. So if price can close above 661, that is the weekly oscillator and change line. That then is going to confirm the move up towards 716, the daily TD9 count breakdown level. Now, volume today, 2.5 million shares. The swing point last time that we were up at the top of this on July 3rd was 2.8 million shares. Now, that was July 3rd. How do you compare July 3rd before July 4th volume to where we're at today? I, I don't know how you do that. But what we do know is the number. And that's at 639. You close above that today, you close above it tomorrow, then the Sybane Stillwater should uh, be on its way up towards 716. You got to get it to clear that 661. That's that weekly oscillator on change line. So, Dan, I don't see anything else out here to help you with regard to those two instruments, but thank you very much for taking the time to write in. Uh, I see CKP and the Tigers. And you're welcome. You're welcome. Wants to take a look at. Uh, natural gas. So let's pull up the natural gas charts out here. Let's take a moment to populate, but we'll get the multi set of uh, time frame charts out there. I just got to get to that spot on my system and G, not in Q. There we go. So in a moment here, CKP, CKP, we'll get the uh, natural gas charts. Can you look at crude oil and natural gas? Yeah, we can look at both. No problem. So crude oil is going to get a, a TD9 count top that's going to uh, confirm today and complete tomorrow. So that says we should expect and anticipate a retracement to unfold. With regard to natural gas, we just have a consolidation with inside its daily profile. You can see that if you take a look at the um, – a daily time frame chart. Now, it's a nice big profile out here. That profile runs from $2.55 up to $2.93. Now, this is a, a bullish structured profile. And if price can close the day above 267 uh, CK, what we should see is a move up to $2.93 just to continue on with that consolidation with inside its profile. We also have a consolidation with inside the weekly profile. The weekly profile has a Rose Mintum indicator bottom pattern out here. And on a monthly time frame, what we need to see is a close this month. We're too far, too early into it, but we need to see a close below two dollars, two point six seven three to be exact, in order to generate a TD nine count bottom. No idea whether that will unfold or not. With regard to the intraday charts out here, I don't see any kind of a top right now. I see price above profile levels, so we should see a continued move higher inside of natural gas, and that says that longer term, perhaps what we're going to do, go do is target two ninety three. So CK, I hope that helps you out with regard to that. Let's close this set of charts out and let's go ahead and open up White Sweet Crude, which we're still trading the August contract, but that's rolling here shortly. So let's take a look at where we're at right now in with regard to the August contract. We're having a nice rally. Price is trading into a prior swing point out there. But what we're going to be concerned with here, CK, is that daily chart. That's going to be chart number three from the left up top. You're going to see that we are going to form bar number nine today of a TD nine count. So I ordinarily we would celebrate the fact that price is taking out and closing above or likely to close above the top of a bearish structured daily profile. However, that celebration could be short lived. 
might last through tomorrow because we know that on a TD9 count pattern, the high or low of that pattern can occur on the bar following bar number nine. So I would say that by tomorrow, we should see some type of short-term top form inside of light sweet crude. How would we know that? Well, the short-term time frame charts will see topping patterns out there. That then should take price back to support. Now, with regard to the daily time frame, this is August. I'll switch over to September here. Yeah, I'll do that uh, in, in a moment. In the case of the August contract, price would be the ideal pullback would be to 73.16 where it finds support. So you get a close day above the top of the profile, get it close tomorrow above the top of the profile. That begins a retracement. And the ideal retracement is that you would find a counter trend move that finds support at 73.16. That would then say Lights Recruit is getting ready to rocket up to 81.64 out there. So now let's close up this chart here, the daily. Uh, the weekly, you can see a nice good old fashioned consolidation out there. So just been consolidating for quite some time. Intraday wise, we don't see any kind of a topping signal. Uh, I take that back. The 30 minute chart. So the 30 minute chart has a TD9 count pattern that's going to complete at uh, another three and a half minutes out there. So watch this. Why? Because if there's a close above today's high so far, today's high in lights we crude is 7478. Again, this is the August contract. That's going to tell you about a further move higher. Otherwise, expect a retracement. That retracement should take us back to about 73.64 to 73.88. If price were to close below 73.24, I'd say that the TD9 count top may have started right then and right there. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're still looking at Lightspeed Crew, and I flipped over to the September contract. Here we've just got the daily and the weekly. we got daily, weekly, and monthly. But it's the daily that we're focused in on. So you see the bar number nine is going to complete today. The pattern, the TD9 count top, will then complete tomorrow. We'll confirm today, and it'll complete tomorrow. Here we can see that price is trading with inside a bullish structured profile. So much different than the August contract. September is one really now to be paying attention to. So I expect that we uh, the rally holds today. Maybe we get another rally uh, tomorrow, but we get a, at least an a short term, perhaps intermediate term top. Either way, what price should do now is pull back and test support. In the case of the September contract, the numbers to write down on your pad of paper are 72.97. That's the center of its bullish structured profile. So the zone of that bullish structured profile is between 71.72. Write that down. It's between 71.72 and 72.97. That's where price should find support. If price closes below that, well, then we're back to the consolidation. You're already back to the lows. You're back to the breakout level that's been tested back at the 66.80. And this is the September contract for Lightspeed Crude that we are taking a look at right now. On the monthly base, you can see price right up at the bottom of that monthly profile. So resistance, while you've got a topping pattern on the daily time frame, now all you're looking for is intraday charts, 10, 15, 30, 60, watching those charts to find some type of topping signal. If there's going to be a top, it first starts on the intraday charts and rolls its way through to the longer time frames out there. So that's Lightspeed Crude for you. Took care of natural gas. Uh, still waiting on a response back here from InnoVisual. Uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at some of the other markets out here. So the other markets, what I mean by that actually is let's take a look at no, not that market. Let's take a look at what's going on in the equal weighted markets out here. So the RSP, the RSP is the equal weighted uh, uh, instrument for the S&P 500. Beautiful, uh, always good to when you got when you have when you when you've got the markets that are trading like they're always good to take a look at, especially the NDX 100, right? So there's uh, one of the questions, let's kind of, a, I didn't even plan on doing this, but but uh, the question that InnoVisual was asking about was, uh, as was brought to our attention yesterday, there's going to be a rebalance of seven of the NDX 100 stocks, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla, Google, Twice, Meta, and Amazon. We don't know what their weighting is. Uh, that's going to, the new weighting, I think that comes out on the 14th. I think the weighting takes place a week from yesterday if I'm not mistaken. And so, uh, you know, and so we talk about the Magnificent Seven and the NASDAQ moving things here. Well, it's always good to take a look at the week at, at the uh, equal weighted chart. Now, this is for the S&P 500. And the S&P 500, you can see when the S&P or the RSP did form its top was a TD9 count top back on February 2nd. When it formed its bottom it was wave number seven, letter G, and a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern out there. So that's a beautiful thing. Now we've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. It needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point or a Gartley sell pattern. We've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that has been triggered. A bearish reversal candle would also confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. But as we speak right now, prices above resistance, there is no reason for the S&P 500 to not continue to move higher out there. Let's take a look at the QQEW. That's the equal weighted for the NASDAQ 100. The QQEW out here is trading above the top of its daily profile. It is trading above its green oscillator and change line. And visual, you wanted me to do a bit of a deep dive out here. Well, you don't get any deeper than taking a look at what's going on inside the equal weighted ETF. And here, this says that the rally today, the rally is real. This rally is not just about those seven instruments, even though that's what everybody wants to make it a part of. You can't take a look at the equal weighted cues out there, see that it's trading above resistance, the top of its profile, uh, as well as its green oscillator and change line, and not come to the conclusion that for the daily time frame, the cues are bullish. Now, when we take a look at the weekly time frame, bar number nine will complete this week, but that will not be a weekly TD9 count top. The only way that happens is if by Friday there is a spike above the high from June 16th. So 108.23. If the 
QQEW, the equal weighted ETF, were to spike above that, then you would get a weekly TD nine count top. When we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, we have price above profile, price above green oscillator and change line. The monthly chart is communicating to us that 118.63. So the very first thing that you know, and didn't really plan on doing this, but I did want to take a look at the at the equal weighted ETFs out there. But to kind of go along with perhaps what's in your thinking, and the thinking in many out there is that this whole NASDAQ is just moving higher because of just seven stocks out there, really eight, right? Because you'd have to throw uh, Apple into that. And yes, it's moving higher because of those stocks. But when we look at this equal weighted ETF out here, there's no divergence. In fact, this is confirming that we should see um, a continued move higher. That, In fact, this is confirming that, let's take a look at what's the normal seasonal pattern for the NDX 100. Let's go ahead and uh, get that up on our screen out here. I believe that says we, oh geez, I can't do it there. Let me pull it off this screen. We'll go change screens over here. Give me a moment, we'll change screens. We'll take a look at the, uh, what the seasonal pattern is for the uh, NDX 100. We've got to change out instruments here. So here we've got the NDX 100. This should populate, let's get as many years as we can. That's 37 years. The red vertical line tells us where we're at today and what you can see here. So over 37 years, the NASDAQ 100 typically rallies into next Monday, uh, July the 17th. And then it can be hellacious because it typically doesn't bottom until we get into the October time frame. Here's the end of October where you get a, a bottom. There's another bottom that uh, takes place in the early part of October. This is for the NDX 100. If we take a look at this exact same, now we, we can change from 37 years. You might say, Steve, Steve-o, 37 years, really? How about 15 years? Okay, well, here's 15 years. If you take a look at the last 15 years, this says that uh, the NASDAQ 100 rallies into August before it starts to decline into October. So a bit of the deep dive, you know, that you were asking for, well, we've looked at, at we've looked, looked at, or we've looked at the equal weight for the uh, NDX 100. It says the rally is real. We've looked at the market breadth for 30, 60, 240 daily and weekly. It says the rally is real out there. Um, how else can we do a deeper dive? Well, I guess what we could do here is we could take a look at some of those instruments. So let's, for example, let's take a look at Microsoft, MSFT. <laughs> let's put Microsoft up here, which I believe has a topping pattern and prices consolidating with inside its profile. That was my recollection. I'm wrong. It's consolidating sideways out here. It's trading below profile, but it's dealing with the swing point from back here on the trading day, or one of the swing points is June 26, 21 million shares there. Yesterday, this did 32 million shares of the downside and couldn't bust out that bottom. Today, it's testing it again. Volume out here is 10 million. Again, that 10 million going against 21. So you've got good volume, but it can't bust out those lows out there. That's on Microsoft. If it does bust out those lows, because it certainly has the volume, then you know what we would take a look at is an A to B equals CD to the downside. Side. I'll draw on the A to B level out here, and if I just simply take this over to the uh, C point, you can see that one-to-one -one would take us down to about the $320 area. Just seeing the home screen. Oh, sorry about that. Give me a moment here. Thank you for uh, being my wingman out there. Al, and now we've got that up here as well. Mr. Bill, thanks for being my wingman as well. Okay, so here's the charts for Microsoft. You can see the daily. You can see wave number seven, Roadsmith to Indicator top. This is the swing point I was referring to from back here on June 26th. The volume there, 21 million shares. Yesterday, you're down with 32. Today, so far, you're already down with 10. So it's got the volume. It can take that out. If I take that out, I mean it closed below 328.49. Then you get an A to B equals CD to the downside. Gives us a price projection of about 320 out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so I started running something uh, during that break there. I wasn't really sure if it would uh, completely populate by the time we came back on the air, and the answer is it's not. This is a uh, calculation that's going on right now for each of these time frames, these time frames being daily, weekly, monthly, 15-minute, 30-minute, 65-minute, 130-minute. And uh, so those are time frames, and it tells you what the current market condition is, whether it's bullish, bearish, what style of bullishness or bearishness uh, exists. This is a uh, – top, and, and uh, the reason I pull, pulled this up on the uh, – chart um, to try to get this – and we, this will populate during the show. And it's just I can't do anything right now inside my Ninja Trader system until this does that, or I have to just shut that whole piece of that pie down. So we won't do that. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that here. But, but each evening – Monday through Thursday, at least, I produce an evening report for uh, subscribers, or at least most evenings, I'm able to do that. And that way, it gives them a feel for what just transpired, what maybe to consider taking a look at, what signal changes have occurred. But also, on something like this, they get this report each night as well. And this report really goes into the request here from InnoVisual inside the Tiger's Den, which was trying to understand what's going on with the top instruments inside the indices out here. So this shows us the uh, top 10 for the Dow, that's in the upper section, then the top 10 instruments for the S&P. Now, those might have shifted a little bit. I think the last time I updated this was a couple of months ago. So there may be a name that needs to be moved out or in, but basically these are the stocks that are in the top 10. Now, when you get to the NDX 100, what I can't do is put a symbol name out here twice. So here you can see when you get to the NDX 100, this is the top 10, there's only two, four, six, seven of them without Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Google, and Tesla, because those are up above out there. So that's how you would actually use this. It tells us a top 10 inside the Russell 2000 and the top 10 inside the semiconductor. So I think this is one of the more valuable charts out there because we do know, I mean, we spent a little bit of time taking a look at weightings, taking a look at the equal weighted ETFs out there. But this is an invaluable chart because those weightings do, they do play a factor. They do play a role. So wouldn't you like to know what's the market condition for the top 10 instruments inside the Dow 
for its daily or its weekly or its monthly time frame. And you most certainly would. If you are a long-term trader, then a lot of what I do here during the show is just to help you to understand the patterns that I use, and you can see them work on the intraday basis. But the noise of what goes on in a daily chart might be too much for you, and you'd really just be focused on that uh, a monthly or the weekly uh, current outlooks out there. But what I also do is I show here, this uh, tool shows you what each of the current TD9 counts are. Now, this won't have today's bar. In fact, it won't have today's, now we've got it fully populated here. It won't have today's bar until uh, tomorrow's open out there. We've got the current uh, Chapman wave counts, whether it's to the upside, U for upside, D for downside. So we've got both of those. We know where our oscillator and change line is at. Uh, uh, and, and whether it's above resistance or below support, exactly what the numbers are, what the uh, daily TD9 support levels are, what the daily TD9 resistance levels are, uh, where we have um, uh, our TAS market profile support and resistance. And, and it tells us when we had our last top and bottom, TD9 top and bottom. So a ton of information. So, you know, here if we take, so here's, here's the danger in, let's say, shorting the Dow. Here, if you take a look at the daily time frame, you've got breakout bull, for uh, several of these instruments, three of the uh, ten, you're bullish. Uh, you're only bearish for the uh, for United Health, Goldman Sachs. Where else are the bears? Strong bear for Amgen, uh, yeah, Amgen out there. So just three of the ten are in the uh, let's say for the daily time frame are in the bearish camp. You know, take a look at the monthly time frame out here. You've got a lot of bullishness out here again. So somebody that's uh, take a look at their longer term portfolio. Versus some of the stuff that we do here, which we're taking a look at 30-minute charts. No, that's not going to impact a decision or should not impact the decision of somebody managing the long-term funds out here. But now you've got, here's the top instruments inside the S&P 500. You've got the NASDAQ here to see what's going on. And you can see now if there's going to be changes in trend. So let's just say you're a person that believes there's going to be a change in the trend. Then how do you use this tool? Well, you start taking a look at the intraday charts, 15, 30, 65, and one-third. Now, you might say to yourself, why are you using those time frames? The reason to use those time frames is here we're looking at, we're not looking at futures. We're only looking at individual stocks or ETFs out there. And what you want to be able to do, or at least what I believe you want to be able to do, is take your 390-minute day, your six-and-a-half-hour trading session, and divide that into equal time frames. When you compare a 30-minute bar, it should be compared to a 30-minute bar, not a 15-minute bar. Not a 16-minute bar, but a 30-minute bar out there. So here, the six-and-a-half-hour day easily divides into uh, 15 minutes. It divides into 30 minutes. It divides into 65 minutes and divides into 130. It also divides into 195. There are 295-minute sessions. I don't have that here, and the reason I don't, I, we do look at that on the multi-time frame charts, but the reason I don't have that here is I, I just don't have the space. Everything get too scrunched would be too hard to read out there. So this is a so I'm sure that folks inside the Tiger's Den have taken a snapshot of this. You should take a snapshot of this because it provides you with a ton of information. And this is something that the uh, that subscribers get uh, um, at least four evenings of the uh, week out there. So you know, did that do the job for you with regard to what's going on inside of the markets overall and what's going on underneath the covers? And that's what this tool here really helps us do. So I'm going to go ahead and close that down to free up some resources for me. Uh, lastly, you mentioned something about taking the, the only question that's in here. That's why I'm spending the time because I don't have any other questions, really. So now you were asking about this set of charts here was the NQ. So I think in the NQ, what we did say, what did we say here in the NQ? Let's take a look at where we're at right now. So the NQ, let's start with the shortest time frame. What do we have on a 10-minute basis here for the NQ? We know the resistance is up in this TD9 count breakdown resistance area, 15, 230, You used to have that on your pad of paper out there. Right now, you're just consolidating with inside that uh, profile. But that's a key uh, short-term area of resistance out here. How about on a 15-minute time frame chart? Now, these are the futures contracts, so they're different time frames. So I use different time frames here than I do when I take a look at a cash instrument. But here on a 15-minute time frame, you just have a consolidation going on with inside its profile and price trying to break out above that oscillator change line. 15186.75 uh, uh, is the key number for a close above that would suggest at least a rally back to this morning's high. 30 minute chart, we covered that earlier. Price would pull, pull back, found support at its breakout level. Now it's just dealing with uh, profiles. It's a slightly bearish structured profile. So your sell zone here is 15213 to 15239. A close above 15239 should take us back to the recent highs. 
of the uh, day. 60-minute chart, don't have anything out here. Um, I have a new profile that has formed inside the 120-minute chart. That resistance level's up at 15.230, so you might want to jot that down in your pad of paper. I don't see anything out here that is overly bearish. Let's just say that. Nothing overly uh, bearish out here when we take a look at the detail charts for the NQ. So let's move on to something else. I don't know what that something else would be, though, so we need to find something else. So what's that going to be? Uh, oh, I need to answer this question. My, my, I apologize. This is an important one. The answer there is no. Okay. Um, so what do we want to look at? Let me just make sure that there are no requests. Oh, there is one. Perfect. Uh, a oh, well, that's perfect because that will take us into the uh, semiconductors. So let's go take a look at AMD. Let's uh, get over to a set of charts out here. Let's go ahead and populate it. And let's see what the question is. The question comes in from the golf guy. Golf guy says, just tuned in. Uh, if you have not charted it yet, can you please take a look at AMD for the next target low or high? So we're going to do that. We can see AMD right now. Golf guy is trading inside his bullish structure profile. It does have a TD9 count top. And so the support area here is 108.96 to 110.83 with ultimate support being 103.49. But we'll finish looking at AMD when we get back to this. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at AMD here. AMD's got that nice TD nine count bottom that formed out here on June twenty seventh. Uh, you can see you got breakout support at one hundred three forty nine. You just have a consolidation with inside its profile, and its oscillator and change line is resistance. Other than consolidation, um, I'm not really else what to uh, tell you. Saying the next target to the downside would be one hundred eight ninety six, and below that one hundred three forty nine. The next target to the upside one fourteen fifty nine or 115.83. So that's what I see when I take a look at AMD. Let's take a quick peek at the SMHs out here. The SMHs, I see a sideways consolidation, so to speak. The uh, swing point out here was uh, formed back on June 26th. The volume there is 7.4 million shares. So far today, you're down with 1.7. So the SMHs are pulling back with light volume. They are testing right now its bullish structure daily profile. That's at 150.14. Am I on the, oh, I'm on the wrong? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Thank you, guys. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here we go. Here's the SMHs. So in the SMHs, you can kind of see the sideways consolidation. Here's the swing point. The volume there again, 7.4 million shares. Today, you can see we're at 1.7 million shares out there. So just a consolidation, nothing significant here. Again, back to uh, AMD. Let me just put that chart back up on the screen here. So here's your AMD charts. Here's your TD9 count. There's your next bottom, 108.96, your next bottom target, and then 103.49 below that. The top of the target being in the, the uh, top of the profile, 114. 59 and then the oscillator and change line at 115.81. We'll close out the show taking a look at Apple for Nancy. And Nancy is asking, is Apple stabilizing? We take a look at what it's doing on a daily time frame. We do not have a topping pattern. What we do have is price consolidating with inside its bullish structured profile. So the buy zone here is between 185.96 and 180.96. 785. If I look at a 30 minute time frame chart here for you, Nancy, the 30 minute time frame shows a nice TD9 count bottom and just a consolidation with inside the profile. Watch that TD9 count bottom. If Apple closes below 187.04, that's telling you wants lower price. That lower price would be the bottom of that daily profile, and that's at 185.96 or even down to 185.01. Folks, stay tuned for some great programming lined up here today. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday, and thanks for joining me. Take care now.